Inside Fighting Sioux Hockey is sponsored by Verizon, the University of North Dakota, Shields, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Valor Insurance, and Dahlstrom Motors. It all started in the spring of 1947. Two boys from northern Minnesota stopped by UND's athletic office for a quick chat. The three guys still out in the car had a case of beer, so we weren't the big, you know, we were, weren't going to hang around there too long. <laughs> so. The boys were future Fighting Sioux hockey players Cal Marvin and Dan McKinnon. They came to the athletic director, Red Jarrett, with a plan. If Red got them a season schedule, they would get the players. I don't, I don't think he really knew what he was getting into when he got those guys down there. Dan and Cal recruited guys they knew from amateur teams around the area. The boys who once played against each other in high school would now be men on the same team. Great group of guys. They were all in the same boat. And uh, all they wanted to do was play hockey. The team's humble beginning was accompanied by a humble budget. I think we started out with football jerseys. We were kind of a raggedy bunch, but you know, we, I guess the only thing we had was pride. The pride carried over into the community. The beginning of Sioux hockey also meant the beginning of Sioux hockey fans. It was unbelievable, you know, that's how, how the fans took to us. They'd line up to get in. You know, they'd come early and they'd be standing outside 30 below zero to wait and to buy a ticket to get in the place. They had the fans, the jerseys, and the makings of a real hockey team. But they didn't become a real opponent until a fateful game in January, 1948. They had no idea where Grand Forks were. There was very few of them even knew where North Dakota was. The University of Michigan was a well-established powerhouse in college hockey. Stunned is just one word to describe the reaction after Friday night's game. Well, it was terrific because actually everyone was so elated that uh, uh, we had beat Michigan. John Noah knocked in the winning goal with 46 seconds left in the last period. Word about the unknown team from the north spread quickly. We get there and there was maybe four or five hundred people there and, and uh, we beat them. And the next night you couldn't get a seat in the place so we didn't win the second night, but that was the start of it. The phenomenon of fighting Sioux hockey began. Well, at the time, we probably didn't realize it was, you know, that was such a big thing. It really skyrocketed uh, the team into big time hockey. None of us, in our wildest, you know, imagination ever thought it would, would come to the point it did. Even though many teams still weren't sure where North Dakota was, this raggedy bunch put UND on the map for college hockey. <laughs>